Episode 9 with Randy Schrum. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. Welcome back, Men of Abundance. It is Monday, and we have an unbelievable week ahead of us. We are starting off the week with Randy Schramm, and Randy and I, in this conversation, we talk about how he went from being the janitor to one of the executives of the company that he was working for, and then to go on to be an entrepreneur and own seven businesses while he's raising seven kids. Unbelievable, man. You're going to love this conversation. We get very deep in this conversation. Then on Wednesday, we're talking with Jesse Ortiz. Jesse is a podcaster as well, and his podcast is Lifestyle Conversations. Then on Friday, I'm excited to tell you that we have our very first lady on the show. We are going to have a conversation with Shadonna McFall. Shadonna is the founder of Moe's Heroes, and she is doing amazing things in our community, and I want to lift that up and pay it forward to all of you. Before I introduce Randy, I want to remind you what makes Men of Abundance so different than any of the other shows out there. We are a community of men paying it forward and lifting each other up. And we have two shows a week where we're talking with abundant leaders in our community. And then on Friday, we are paying it forward to one of you, a nonprofit organization like we will this Friday with Shadana and Moe's Heroes, or we are otherwise lifting somebody up in some way, shape, or form. In addition to that, the other thing that makes Men of Abundance different than anybody else is we are a true community, and I have set up a community for us to continue the conversation, and you can find that community and get involved in the conversation by going to Facebook and searching Men of Abundance Community. Click on the green button to join, and I will give you access to that community. Otherwise, you can go in the show notes of this show or any of the other shows, but this show is at menofabundance.com forward slash 009. And you'll go directly to the Facebook community where you'll be able to join. All right, let's get on with today's show. Randy and I first met a little over two years ago. Randy Shrum is a multiple business owner, husband, and father of seven. And when I say multiple business owner, he owns seven businesses. He's a family-focused entrepreneur, successful businessman, speaker, and business consultant, along with being a mentor to entrepreneurs, executives, and men. Randy has been fortunate enough to close million-dollar deals. He's invested in real estate and travels the world because of his businesses. In fact, some of his businesses have had five- and six-figure days. Needless to say, Randy has a very unique understanding of marketing and sales. Randy is bringing families back together through entrepreneurship, family economics, and manhood. By equipping them with the knowledge, mentorship, and truth he believes is desperately needed today. That is exactly what this Men of Abundance community is all about and why we have Randy on the show today. Randy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I already mentioned kind of a short bio and talked a little bit about you and how we met and stuff like that, but let's hear a little bit more about you, uh, your background, what you're doing up to this point, and let's get a little bit personal. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm married for now 19 years, got back to, got married back in 1997, and we now have seven children, ages from 23 on down to Ruthie, who is three months, and um, uh, we live quite an interesting life. We have multiple businesses. We actually have seven, and we have a survival business. Uh, we have a publishing company, and we have a couple of uh, what we'd call news websites in the conservative space, and just some other interesting things that we have going on. And uh, it's been going pretty well the last few years, and and so um, I'm excited to be sharing a little bit more about that here on the podcast. And I'm definitely excited to hear about that. But I got to ask you, man, you know, seven children, that is a full time job in itself. And, you know, God bless your wife for sure, because I know you're traveling quite a bit and uh, running all those businesses. And yet I still see you out and about traveling around with your family. You're out in the woods a lot. You're out in nature. And we'll talk about that. But how on earth do you get all that done? You know, it's uh, it's interesting. It's a it is about execution. It's about priorities. It's, it's also, it's also this this what I would call divine dance. You know, um, a lot of people 
who want to be successful in business think that you have to work eight to faint and focus all your time and energy on business. And I have found quite the opposite. The more I focus on my family, the more fruitful my business becomes and more uh, the, the more the resources begin to flow in, which is is really at odds with the way you know we naturally think as men but um, you know when you when you begin to sow into the things that really matter you'll see other areas of your life just you'll see the rewards you'll start reaping those rewards and so that's uh, that's how I get it done which is a little bit not what people would think but you know you know like la- I, I would say we just got back from I took my son to Boundary Waters, which is, you know, the U.S. Canada border, and we, for seven days, went off grid and just went all over the place. And at that same time, we were launching a new company, and I kept saying the couple months prior to that that this probably is not a good idea. But I had made a commitment that I was going to take my son through Boundary Waters and live off grid for seven days and canoe all over the place. And our business actually just continued to excel while we were gone but then I came back for about a week and then went off grid again on another camping trip and which right now in our business it's probably one of the highest growth periods in our business we've ever seen and at the same time I'm I'm you know the the natural thing inside of me rises up and I'm sure it does with a lot of uh, men is that you feel this anxiety that there's so much to do there's so many things that need to be addressed and you don't want it to fall through the cracks and you feel all that pressure, but at the same time, you cannot leave your family behind. And, and business does not, uh, does not qualify you to be able to segregate your family outside of your business. You need to be able to bring them along and, and sow into them as you do it. Yeah, and once I made that decision after our conversation about six months ago, I found that to be exactly 100% true. And then you look at guys out there who I respect um, but don't completely agree with, like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, who is, you know, just balls to the walls. I mean, he's just going all the time. And he has, you know, you can see his his transition. He has, he still spends time with his family and stuff, but he's always, always working and always traveling and stuff like that. And then in a complete contrast, I see you and running businesses and still spending time with family and spending time out in nature. How important is uh, spending time out in nature with your family? You know, it's really important. It it gives us an ability to get away from all the the media, all the, you know, the technology and really just focus in on relationship. And, you know, the way our businesses are ran, we we use technology. We use a lot of social media. We use Facebook and YouTube. We I mean, Facebook is our number one lead source right now for our companies. But at the same time, you know, we get out in nature because it allows us to recalibrate and and refocus and and really just connect with um, you know the God of the universe and ha- and just be listening for what He has to say to us and and oftentimes when I do that, Wally, I'll come back and I will have so much clarity in my business or in my relationships that it's like I just fast forwarded through you know weeks if not months of of things that you know, I would have went through if I would not have taken that time to recalibrate. Yeah, and I have to say in reference to that, you know, like I mentioned, we talked six months ago, but my wife has been telling me for years, and I'm doing very, you know, I was in the Army 25 years, and that's very time consuming, takes up a lot of time, deployed all the time. And then I was even deployed, I was starting some sort of a business, I was always in some sort of business venture. So when I was, even when I was at home, I was coming home, spending my time building a business, doing various things. She goes, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm doing everything I'm doing is doing it for the family. And she's like, really? Are you really? Because look what you're missing right now, Mm -hmm. right now today. And it never really hit me. It's because I was following all these guys and I was doing what everybody else was doing. And I just wasn't paying attention to what was most important in my life. And, and then, you know, sometimes, honestly, it's, I'm sad to say, you know, Tracy's my wife, my best friend, but, uh, sometimes you got to hear it from somebody else or see it in somebody else's lifestyle. So I appreciate that conversation we had several months ago and she'll say, see, I told you and you never listen to me, <laughs> but, but, you know, sometimes it just takes it. It's like we can, you know, we get to the point now where we can work out together, but we don't talk to each other. I don't try to correct her. She don't correct me. I don't mind if she corrects me, right. but you know, it's just how uh, some couples are. Yeah. You know, and I will say this, you know, since we're kind of going down this, this topic and, and, you know, there, you know, 
some men, you know, they know something right now is resonating with them, but they don't know how to fix it. They don't know how to figure it out. And the reality is, friends, you can be looking at someone who's modeling it, modeling and, and just crushing it in their business. And you just named one person a moment ago, Wally, and here's the point. They might be crushing it in their business. They might be making $100,000, $500,000 a month. But they may be morally bankrupt. They may be relationally bankrupt. Their, their, their family or um, other areas of their life could be in shambles. And, and so I think we've all heard the saying, if you buy someone's opinion, you buy their lifestyle. And the only thing that we want to rel- relate that to is their checkbook, but we don't want to uh, ask the question, what did it take to get that checkbook to look like that or that bank account to look like that? And I'm of the opinion, and I've proven it, that there's a better way. There's a better way to do business and entrepreneurship where you bring your family alongside you. And you know, one of the great writings of history says this, that you train your children and bring your family along when you wake up, when you walk by the way, during the day, during the night, at all times. And so my point is, is that uh, business, family, faith, politics, it's all one. You don't segregate. And I think one of the things that we see in this day and age, especially in the United States, is segregation. We segregate, segregate age groups. We segregate our business from our personal life. We spend more time out there in in the the, the commerce and or the, the in the career path and chasing the career, chasing the dollar, and we segregate that from our personal life. In fact, we spend more time doing that than we do with the people we love and care about. And then we, se- we send the people that we love and care about to be with teachers and educators that, at, frankly, are spending more time with our children and our family than we are. And we wonder why we have such opposition and such uh, struggle with relationship and family. And it's, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. There is a better way. And if you want a life of abundance, you have to begin to address that and understand that um, at the end of the day, one of the things that this culture is really uh, fueled is this, is it's, it's fueled that you have to have your alone time. You have, to, you have to be away from your family nine or ten hours a day. And even when you get into entrepreneurship and home business, somehow we have it programmed in our mind, and this is a negative way to think, that we somehow need to get away from everyone in our family to go run our home business and, and segregate them out of it when at, at the end of the day what we really should be doing is bringing them alongside of us. And, and, and if they're not ready to hear all of that information, if they're not really ready to dive into entrepreneurship because their mind's been so programmed in the employee mindset, then it's our job as men to set a plan in place where we expose them to this idea of home business and entrepre- entrepreneurship over time, meaning you know, they haven't read the things that we've read. They've not seen the things that we've seen. They've not heard the things that we've seen. However, we are that we've heard. And however, we expect them to immediately buy in to our entrepreneurial uh, endeavors and our home business uh, endeavors and the money that we want to invest. But we've not done our job. Our job is to bring them along and begin to sow those seeds so that they better understand and, and reshape their worldview from a worldview of, of acting like an employee and thinking like an employee versus thinking like an entrepreneur because there's a big difference. You see, employees will trip over pennies to make dollars, meaning they won't be able to ever make the dollar because they trip over the pennies. However, in entrepreneurship, you have to invest money in order to make money, and being able to, to cross that chasm takes time. And so it's our job to bring our families alongside us. And, you know, I don't want to just uh, pass on a legacy. I want to pass on something that my children and my, my, you know, my family will grab a hold of and know what to do with it. Instead of in this day and age when people pass on a legacy, their children grab a hold of it and they don't know what to do with it. In fact, they go and usually sell it off because they have no clue of the things that are, that are right there in their hands. That's absolutely correct. And to prove that in my private community and the private men of abundance society, one of the members asked that question is, you know, I've got insurance, I've got all that set up. But what do you guys suggest that I do to leave behind for my family? And there were a lot of answers, very good answers uh, that were helping this guy out. And, you know, a lot of it was exactly what you just said. Leave them something that they can continue on with. Leave them, well, leave them your values, part of you, who you are, your, your honor, your integrity, but also leave them with skills. Mm-hmm. And I think that's absolutely perfect. So, you know, since I've known you, Randy, mm-hmm. uh, it's been a couple of years since we first met. I've always seen you as this extremely successful guy in, in everything that you do. I didn't know you 
uh, during your struggles and, you know, your hard times and all that stuff. So what is that, that kick in the gut moment that really, either in your personal life or in your entrepreneur life, what is that kick in the gut moment? Yeah, I would say that, you know, you know, people look at me today and they say, you know, Randy, you speak in front of thousands, you have successful businesses, you know, you must have been given a silver spoon. Well, it wasn't the case. In fact, you know, when I was three or four, my mom and dad divorced and I lived in a broken home and, and um, you know, in, in, in the, the mindset of my family and the, the legacy that was trying to be passed on to me during that time. Um, I have two older sisters and, you know, when my mom and dad divorced, we ended up going into a protection house for about a year because my dad was out of his mind and, and wanted to kill my mom and we weren't sure if he wanted to kill us. And, and so I remember it vividly because I remember living off of evaporated milk. And, uh, and then, you know, during that time, you know, my mother was – you know, working jobs and, you know, you hear these stories of people who walk through the snow every day and, you know, walk to their job miles. Well, I, re I remember when I was growing up in DeSoto, Missouri, and my mom would walk a, a couple miles to a plant called Sondelier, and she would do it all the time. But she began to, you know, have, you know, just really, you know, emotional issues and psychological issues. And so she ended up trying to kill herself a couple times. And unfortunately, we were the ones that found her. And, and um, so I decided that, you know, when I was about nine or 10 years old, that I would go and move in with my father, because I didn't really believe that he was as crazy as I thought he was, and uh, ended up doing that. And during this whole time, I really struggled in school. I I usually got D's. I, I, did, I had no ability to communicate. You know, if you were to call on me in class to read or stand up in front of the room, you, you, it, it just would not happen. You know, I, I stuttered. I was really nervous. I couldn't look anyone in the eye. And I did that all the way till I was uh, 15 years old. And, you know, I had no real friends because I was such an introvert. And, um, you know, and then when I moved in with my father, we lived out on a farm he sold drugs out of the house and, uh, you know, couldn't hold down a job and, uh, um, you know, just did a lot of bad things. He ended up going to prison. I ended up uh, coming home when I was 15 years old. I ended up, uh, you know, there was a transition and I'll share more about that in a moment. But, you know, I, I found my dad. You know, I came home one night and my dad was there drunk. He was an alcoholic and he ended up shooting himself and, uh, his back was blown out on the floor and I had to call the ambulance and I seen it all right there. And, uh, so when people say, you know, um, you don't know my story. Well, I can say the same thing. You don't know my story. And if you want it bad enough, you can change that. You can change your future. And I can tell you right now, when I was growing up those later years on the farm, you know, I would hunt and fish all the time. I spent probably half my time out in the woods or sleeping on a creek bake or sleeping in the woods because it just was a volatile home. And uh, doing that, I ended up, you know, I would be at night looking up at the stars or, you know, looking at nature saying there's got to be more to this life. You know, I, you know, um, this is not the way men, this is not the way we're meant to, to live. And, and that just began a lot of soul searching for me. And that's when I, I met the God of the universe and I realized the magnitude of everything that he created and I you know that's became when it became real and personal to me and I made that decision one night on a creek bank when I was 15 and um, I said you know God you, you've got to help me and if you you know you've created all this then you can instantly change uh, my situation you can instantly change my inadequacies my ability to speak my ability to communicate and how to problem solve and and really just change my future so that I didn't end up the way that uh, my family you know, my mother and my father, you know, the life that they were living, that that wouldn't pass on to me. And I will tell you that a lot of things instantly changed for me. I ended up getting good grades. I started playing basketball in school. Um, I started building relationships and, and it just all changed from that point on. And um, in fact, you know, my family now, you know, a lot of my cousins and stuff, they, they'll tell you, you know, they don't recognize me. They don't recognize her. Like, there's no way that that's that's Randy, but that's the case. And so my gut point really was, you know, laying there on the creek bed one night going, there's got to be more. And you get to that point in your lowest point of your life. And, uh, 
you, you, you know that there's more. You know there's a better way. And your answer is not going to be found in just a book or just uh, some one person. You know, at the end of the day, um, it's, a re- it's a personal relationship with God. And um, it, it's, it's asking him to come in close where it doesn't all make sense. It do, you know, it's, the, it's not all about head knowledge. It's about the depth of the mysteries of, of this universe. And the fact is, is, is that God created it. And we'll never be able to fathom the, the deep mysteries of that. But if you could connect with him and you can ask him to speak to you uh, personally in, a, in an expressive way, um, he will. It, it'll surprise you in the ways that he will. But if it's wisdom that you need, ask for it. If it's if it's peace that you need, ask for it. If you're dealing with anxiety when you lay in bed at night, ask ask for help. And uh, so again, I guess my my biggest gut check was coming to that realization that I needed God. I needed I need saving. I needed help. You know, I I could not go on and end up the way that my family, the life that my family was leading. And uh, ever since then, it's uh, it's been it's been an incredible journey, and and uh, I continue to, every day from that day on. I continue to ask for wisdom, wisdom beyond my years, wisdom beyond man's years, and uh, it's just a it's a prayer that I've had for a long time. It's one that I continue to operate by, and it's 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 what's you know. So when people see me speak in front of rooms or anything like that, no, it's not me. Know that um, it is it's something greater than than that, and and that's given me that ability, and um, I'm grateful for it, and I want to be a good steward of it. I completely resonate with that. There are definitely many moments in my life where I can prove that to be absolutely true. So that was your pivot point. So that when you were 15, laying there, um, that was your pivot point in your in your childhood as far as you were going. How did you get into what you're doing now? How did that all work out? Yes. Yeah, so when I once I got married. I was at that time. I was speaking at churches, and and I ended up I ended up uh, becoming a licensed minister, and I ended up speaking at churches. And uh, I felt like God told me that I needed to stop doing that and to go work at this mega church. So I decided to do that. But what He wanted me to do was to go be a janitor at a mega church, and He told me to just observe and listen and serve in the lowliest place possible and just learn and just watch. And for two years, that's exactly what I did. And this church was a church of 5,000. And within two years, then God promoted me to the executive uh, director over their basically 50 employees there and running their basically their, their, their family center. And at that point, I knew that, you know, it was time for me to step away. So I resigned at the high point <laughs> again. And, uh, and, you know, it wasn't good, bad, or indifferent. It's just that I knew I was supposed to resign. And at that time, I knew I was supposed to tar- start my entrepreneurial journey. And that's exactly what I did. And I, uh, I took an internet marketing course. I paid $10,000 for it back in 1999. And it was with a, a personal coach for a year. And, and uh, he set me on my journey. He set me on my journey where, you know, the biggest thing that I learned from him was, you know, Randy, you want to – Use the internet to you know to learn and always be on the cutting edge of information. And if you can do that, if you can always you know as as things are released and and new technologies and new marketing strategies are coming out, reverse engineer them and learn how they operate so you can utilize them and always be on the cutting edge of that. So that's what I learned. I ended up starting investing in real estate. I bought my first property uh, back in I think it was two thousand two thousand one. And it was an estate in St. Louis, and and uh, I ended up uh, flipping the property before I even closed. When I closed on it, basically same day, I flipped it to a banker and and made my you know I made really good money on my very first deal. So it really all started from there. I, I did real estate for a while. I actually even uh, produced an infomercial and sold real estate investment program on TV for a while. Found out I was better at investing in real estate. And then when you know things really started picking up with social media, I started leveraging that, and I haven't turned back since. You know that's a uh, that's really where it all kind of started, and and where we're at today. Now that we have our multiple companies, and you know for a while there I was doing marketing and consulting, but then I realized, wait a second, I really know you know this these marketing strategies really work. So why am I not doing this for my businesses? And so that's what I did. I just I said you know no more marketing agency services. 
I'll, I'll do some high level consulting here and there, but really, I want to use this for my businesses because this stuff flat out works. That's what I started doing, and we haven't turned back since. Yeah, and I'm definitely privy to a lot of that information and the stuff that you've been doing with your business and the stuff that you've shown me. It's amazing, and it does evolve every single day. I, ever since then, I've been staying up with it. That's amazing that you, <laughs> you know, that you mentioned that you started out as the janitor and you, you know, you took a job like that. There's, there's so many jobs out there and so many opportunities and so many ways to gain information. One of the things I tell my boys as, as my oldest and now my middle son, he's 16, getting into the job force, is I tell him, do not go to work for money. I know you want the money. I know you want to make some cash. But when you go to work, regardless of what it is, and he's getting into a good one right now, actually, is, uh, Study the study your managers. Study the people around you. Learn from them. Learn from the good ones. Learn from the bad ones. And then you'll you know you that's the that's the best thing you'll ever get from a job, is learning from the people, especially when you're in uh, customer service like he's getting into. So what are your thoughts on that? I I, I agree, and I I think that you know a lot of people make their decisions in in who they're going to work with, whether they're taking a job or they're working with someone in you know home business. They allow situations, they allow a dollar sign to move or change their moral compass. And what really needs to happen is you need to stick to your beliefs. You need to stick to, all right, am I aligning myself with leadership or an, a, a manager who isn't so depraved that, you know, that I'm just doing it because of the money? You know, and, and the closer you lock arms with someone, the closer that if you're in business with someone, if you if it's more like a partnership, the more you really need to examine that because if you're allowing the situation to move or change your moral compass, you are you I would suggest that you you're not living for the you're not you're not making the decision for the right reasons. And it's really important, you know, and and a lot of people that challenges a lot of people, maybe people that are listening today, but you know, you may be in a business right now that you've locked arms with someone that is so diametrically p opposed to your beliefs. And by doing so, those that follow you and trust you are watching from the outside. And because of you've been passive about it, they have assumed that you are okay with it. And therefore, you have now endorsed a different belief system, a different value system that you don't believe in. And now the people who trust you are now th – the lines have become grayed. And so my point would be is is don't move or change your moral compass to, to situations. Don't don't say oh I just want the money. No, go after the 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 business or the job that's something that you really believe in that um, that aligns with your values. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Randy. So we're going to pay it forward here in just a minute. You ready for that? Absolutely. Awesome. Give men of abundance one to three actionable steps that men of abundance can take today. So I would I would recommend a couple things. So I would recommend that you implement the slight edge principle, meaning, you know, you have goals right now. I'm sure you have big goals. And listen, you know, it's like setting a New Year's resolution. You say, I want to lose 30 pounds or drop 30 pounds but you somehow think that you can drop 30 pounds in two weeks and it doesn't work that way. You didn't gain 30 pounds in two weeks. You gained 30 pounds over three months. And so you have to, it was, it was the constant eating of those hamburgers or the constant eating of those fries over three months. And so the point is, is that you need to have slide edge principles because the negative side of slide edge is that you, you eat a hamburger every day when you shouldn't. And so every day create many wins in your life and create many successes of goals that you want to achieve maybe you just need to execute on three things today and execute on three things tomorrow just minor things and then so you set daily goals or even hourly goals and then you set weekly goals after that and then you can set monthly goals but if you really want to get to your ultimate destination you you can't just sit there and say I'm only looking at my ultimate destination and you're not creating many goals throughout the day throughout the week that you can achieve so here's what happens if you cannot create many successes in your life on a daily basis you begin to tell yourself and program yourself in your subconscious that you'll never be able to achieve that goal however if you create many wins on a daily basis on just minimal goals that you want to hit You'll begin to you'll begin to be able to convince yourself and believe that you're going to be able to hit that ultimate goal, and so number one would be that slight edge principle. Number two would be read the books. You know, um, make sure you're reading the books, and if you can't read so well, then get audio books. 
and, and, and continue to do that, always be learning. And the last thing I would say is, especially within business, is this, is without leads, your business withers and dies. So my point would be this in that statement. Learn marketing and lead generation and stay on the cutting edge of it. And you say, well, Randy, I could pay other people to do that. Yes, you could pay other people to do that. But if you don't have a some type of foundation around marketing and, and continually sharpen your axe around that, then you're going to be mer- at the mercy of the person who is selling their marketing services to you. And it's mind-boggling to think that if you're in business, entrepreneurship or home business, that you would completely – put your future in someone else's hands without understanding this one critical area and that is marketing. Why in the world would we go and spend all of our time and resources on all these other areas in business and not fundamentally, I don't care if you're the CEO and the founder, you need to have a fun, fundamental understanding of marketing and lead generation and continue to sharpen that ax even if you're not the one implementing it because at the end of the day, there's a lot of marketers who are eating pizza pockets in their mom's basement trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, meaning they may understand one marketing method and because you're at the mercy of that person and they're selling their services, that that marketing method they may be selling may be selling you short because it might not be the best thing for you. So the three tips I'm giving you are slight edge, you know, implement that on a daily basis, read the books, um, and then number three is you need to sharpen your axe and start learning marketing and lead generation, and it's an ongoing process. That's absolutely correct. I appreciate that. What daily habits make the biggest impact in your life? So a couple things. I use a, a, a program called Evernote, and I always put down my to-do list. And then another habit that I do is is I will get out of the office, and I'll put myself in a place in an environment where it's bright, it's open, it's clear, and uh, give myself at least an hour or two where – I can give my mind some some ability to create and to be free. So that's a daily habit that is absolutely important. And if I find myself during my day spinning my wheels and hardly getting something done over a three-hour period, then I will go uh, either on a walk or a hike or I might go uh, to the coffee shop for a, a little bit to get me out of that pattern. So those are some of the things that I do on a daily basis to make sure I'm staying productive is is that you've already mentioned the slight edge or you referenced the slight edge anyway by jeff olson excellent book and i highly recommend it and i'll have that in the show notes as well what is another book that you would recommend that the men of abundance leaders read or listen to because i absolutely love audio i I just consume so many books through audio one because i'm a slow reader but two because i'm when i'm commuting and whatnot i just get through a lot of audio books but what book would you recommend to men of abundance other than the slight edge so there's a number of books. I'll actually send a couple to you, Wally, that are not off the top of my head, but specifically around how we as men can bring our family along in business. But a book that I can tell you I, I, that is absolutely a phenomenal book when it comes to sales, comes to closing uh, in consulting or webinars, is a book called Pitch Anything by Oren Claff. And Oren, he goes around and he, he typically raises anywhere from one to two million a week um, in in the in the financial space of raising capital for companies, and you know if if someone can do that on a consistent basis, 365 days a year, and they can do that on a weekly basis and have done that for years, I'd like to learn what they what the the, the, the process they've created, and Oren has done that, and it's a phenomenal book. It is if you struggled with sales, and uh, you want to know an actual formula for it that flat out works. This, this is a great book. Um, I would highly recommend it. And then along the lines of marketing and is the book called by Simon Sinek, Start With Why. He also has the TED Talk on it that's about 18 minutes and he did this TED Talk back in 2009. And we operate our businesses around that principle of starting with why when we begin to market, when we begin to attract our prospects and really speaking to their core emotions. Because you could talk all the features and benefits that you want to, but at the end of the day, they want to know that you get them, that you understand them, and they want to feel good about doing business with you. And so I really highly recommend that book, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. I completely agree with that. I've got both of those books. In fact, um, Pitch Anything, I've got that one in audio 
digital and hard copy because <laughs> I had to study that book. That's one book that I had to study. And man, I want you to know that that book is not just about sales. That book is about pitching anything. I mean, even if you want to pitch your spouse on something, pitch your wife, pitch your boss, pitch your kids, it, it really shows you how to set up the framework before you even go into a meeting with anybody. I definitely highly recommend that one. Like I said, I've got it in all three forms possible. Uh, so, Randy, we talked about earlier as well, um, Men of Abundance, at the end of our 12-month anniversary, uh, which is way down the road, what revenue that has been generated through Men of Abundance in whatever way, shape, or form, a portion of it will go to various charities, uh, some that I resonate with personally, but I also give my guests the opportunity to mention your favorite charity that we will give to on behalf of you. Uh, what charity would that be? I would like it to be Living Water International, and they, they dig clean water wells throughout the world, and uh, they go into areas where they don't have clean water, and they put in a well, and so it's just Living Water International. Excellent. I appreciate that. And we'll definitely look into that. One last question before we close it up here. And I'm going to, when we close it up, I'll give you, ask for some parting guidance and a way that we can reach you, a way that men of abundance can get in contact with you and what you're excited about right now and got going on in your life. But what does living a life of abundance mean to you? You know, it, it really means that in all areas that it's it's a vibrant relationship with my wife and my kids. You know, I wanted to capture my family's heart. I want to make sure that I have my kids' heart, um, that, you know, that there isn't this barrier. So I, I live an abundant life. I believe that, you know, when you're in a relationship with the God of the universe, that um, you can live a life more abundantly in that. And so it's a life of peace. It's a life, a life of knowing that you have that covering that you know you won't always have the answers but um it, it that's the life of abundance to me it's it's the it's the fact that i know that i know that uh god's got it under control for me so let's close this up and if you can leave us with some parting guidance and a way to get in contact with you so yes uh i i would say parting guidance would be this is uh um you can connect with me on facebook i do a lot of uh live streams and you can kind of get to know me, know a little bit about our companies here and there, um, and and kind of follow what we're doing and see, you know, um, if you're interested in survival or our, our, our conservative news website or our direct sales um, news site that we have or any of those things, um, you can learn about them just by simply connecting and following with me on Facebook. And uh, but I do a lot of talks on our Facebook Live, and you can catch the live or the repay. And I would just recommend that you subscribe to those notifications, and that's the best way to get to know me a little bit more and, and what we've got going on over here in our companies. Yeah, and your last, I think it was your last live video, or at least the last live video that I saw, I saw the replay, and it definitely resonated with me. You were definitely on a roll, and I loved everything that you were saying. The comments were quite comical as well. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> that was, I was just, I couldn't get away from it. And that's right, right then and there. That's when I contacted you and said, I got to get Randy on the show, man. So Randy, I truly, truly appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man and, uh, but I really appreciate you taking your time to share all of this very valuable information with men of abundance. Yeah, it was great to be here. Well, Men of Abundance, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Randy as much as I did. And I hope you got a lot out of that conversation. If you did share this episode with three people today now if you're driving i know you can't do that don't try to do that if you're driving but as soon as you can right there on your phone or on your mobile device or on your computer click on share and email this link to three people that you know today or you can send it out on your twitter feed or put it on facebook do whatever you got to do but get this information out make sure you join the facebook community as i mentioned earlier and let's keep this conversation going let's talk about what we learned today all right, man, go out and live your life of abundance, and don't forget to pay it forward. Have an awesome day. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.